media rights is a big thing. They also yep. spoke in this article. They didn't name the network, but they are pretty sure because it's confusing right now. There's Tennis Channel, there's ESPN, yeah, there's you know tricky. all these different places to watch it. They're talking to one network to go ahead and do the whole 2024 season. I think season. it makes more sense to go one network or or to spread it across a couple. Like where do you get well, more viewership? I mean, no, no, no. So I think if it's on one network, people will know where to go watch it. Or, I yeah. think it's just it's it's tricky now because on any given event you're like oh is it on ESPN is it on TBS is it on ABC where is it so I think it makes sense for one network just because I think they're going to be able to gauge the viewership a little better right now we're looking at combination I'm sure regardless of what network it goes to I'm assuming it will still be on YouTube as well Tyson McGuffin, welcome to the McGuffin Show. It's a beautiful day here in Coeur d'Alene. The sun's out, the summer's here. Uh, the kids have been swimming. Uh, I got my lovely princess in front of me here who's always telling me what to do. And I got my main man, K Mac, uh, hanging out in swim. K Mac, what's going on, buddy? Hey, not much. Just uh, happy to be back uh, with the crew. Let's do this. A few things we're going to be talking about this episode is top eight guys and top eight girls, or K Mac and I's pick on who we think the top eight guys and top eight girls that will go in the draft. Selkirk Power Air Signature uh, Paddle has been out. Also, my Skechers Viper Pro shoes are out. We just taught a camp in Nashville, hung out with Papa John for a couple days. We're gonna talk about Wimbledon. MLP has a new CEO and COO, and there's a new league for celebs and for ex-athletes, and that league is called PBX Pickwall. Pretty cool. Happy to have you, K-Mac. Uh, I hear that you're coming to CDA uh, come Sunday. You know, bringing bringing the whole fam down. We got a little get together at your place. Uh, got a lot of lot of young families that are going to be there. Uh, a lot of the, the assistant coaches are coming down, so no, we're excited to get some some lake time in. Maybe a little play session, and I'm going to have to start thinking of a multitude of excuses to me not going and working out with you and Craig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love so it. Have a laundry list, laundry list of excuses. So yeah, so no, next should be, a good, uh, should be a good time. Monday through Thursday next week, uh, showing some appreciation to the people that, uh, that I care about. Uh, mainly it's just teaching pros, but had, uh, had asked my agent, my content person to come as well. They can't come unfortunately, but, um, yeah, we'll have Seth and his, uh, and his wife and his family here. We'll have the butchers here. Uh, Brett, Brett Butcher, correct? Correct. Brett Butcher. Correct. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. Who is a freaking total stud? And uh, last time I saw Brett, he was he was playing at about nine thirty at night. San Clemente PPA may 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 have uh, had to wait for a couple hours to play his first match. But great guy. Um, uh, I, I believe we have Andre uh, Diescu and his family coming as well. Uh, we'll have my man Devin Schmidt. We'll have Mark Milner. Pierre can't make it. Come on, Pierre. Dang Get it. your French Canadian ass. Come on, Pierre. Okay. <laughs> Dropping um, the ball. Anyhow, should be should be a fun time. Yeah, barbecue and lake. Kids are gonna play. Uh, try to get some training in in the morning and try to get some practice in. And uh, actually, next Monday will be my first day back playing. I've taken like three weeks off, so letting this elbow heal. But um, and just so the viewers know, our house is not big enough, so we're doing a little camp out, right? Is that accurate? Uh, it's not on me. It's on my <laughs> wife. I want want no part of it. Bring a tent, Kyle. We got. It's a. It's a. We're it's bringing a, the tent. We're bringing tent the tent. Don't you party. worry about that. <laughs> we'll fill up the tent apartment. Party. All the adults. The I think the adults maybe can fit in the house, but yeah, we definitely right. we're gonna have to stick the kids in the backyard. <laughs> For sure. Anyhow, Good starting idea. off, Mama, what have you been doing? <laughs> aside from, aside from, you know, well, today, being tough on me. Right. Right. No, it's nice to be home. Uh, we had a excellent trip actually we had all the kiddos and normally we would bring a, we would bring a grandma or someone to like help but we just did it solo daddy and it daddy actually, said no and it actually was very it went really well it was probably the best uh, little family vacation hey, that we've had in a hey. long time and it included a two hour and 45 minute drive right. which was super easy so. bank on yourself uh, you know <laughs> bank on i mean sometimes we help is needed <laughs> hey, but hey other times bank on yourself you know no, so super good trip uh, i know we'll probably talk about it more but uh it's nice to be home now and got some hot yoga in this morning and Sweet. Love it. Yeah, I've been home for a couple days. I've uh, been waking up nice and early, working out with Craigie for a couple hours, going to hot yoga. Uh, have not been able to practice, but um, got my cold plunge and my sauna dialed. Um, sauna gets to like 150. Just bought a new red light panel. Wifey's not very happy about it. May, may it cost us a little money. Why? It's because I was in Papa John's sauna at his house. 
sweet sauna. That sucker got to like 225. It was freaking hot. hot. But one thing, so he had, uh, he didn't have the infrared sauna. Uh, he had, um, he had a, what's like, like a, like a stone rock sauna where you get the rocks hot. Anyhow, um, he has these like two red light panels on both sides. Each panel has four bulbs. You turn those suckers on within 10 minutes. That place is smoked out. So I had to sit on the bottom. It oh, it was freaking hot. hot. So hot. anyhow, so you, knowing me, knowing just how, <laughs> how extreme I get, <laughs> I, I, I had to buy one. I had to buy one. No, for sure. And I, I love my sauna from, uh, sunlight and, uh, uh met the owner there at the, uh, the, uh, chicken and pickle exhibition there in Kansas city. It was all good. It just, you know, just takes a little time for it to heat up. And, uh, with me liking to use the sauna in the morning before I take off, um, I would just rather it heat up a little quicker. So, uh, bought that red light panel and, uh, but anyhow, been kind of going back and forth, been doing like 30 minutes in the sauna, 10 minutes in the plunge. Plunge is at 40 degrees. Meg tried to get in there yesterday. It was at like 38 or 39. Freezing cold. And <laughs> she couldn't even last 10 seconds. Well, no, Come but on. tell him. The get first, in there. The first get time. your ass in there. No, no, no. But the first time I went to Heat Praxia and I did the plunge there. I forgot. I got in and my very first time I was able to do 11 no, minutes. No, she was good. So she, she this showed me last up. weekend when I got in and my legs were in pain, I thought something's wrong. And I checked something's the temperature wrong. and it was way too low. Fix the temperature. All good now. <laughs> what is what is the standard like a right yeah. amount of time to, to do the cold plunge for to like get peak peak benefits? Right. I oh. mean, you it, guys know at least five minutes. Five if, minutes. If, I yeah, think is what they okay. you can do yeah. seven to ten, uh, even even better. Gotcha. Um, it's like different levels of practice, right? Like no, there's a it, lot it of health benefit you get at five, time. but then it's like mental above that. You know, you're you're battling mentally and your breath work and all of that so yeah. but i think beneficially as long as you could do five minutes or three minutes even three to five minutes i think you yeah. get get a good benefit. okay yeah. and i mean i haven't been able to do this but savages can do this the, the honestly like the the best way to plunge uh is to not get your body too hot after you get it cold so like the real savages they'll go like eight <laughs> minutes in the plunge they'll wait outside their plunge freeze to death for like five minutes <laughs> and then guess what they don't get back in the sauna. They don't get back in the hot tub. What do they get back in? They get yeah. back in that plunge. I'll tell you what. You are a tough, you know what, if you can hang in that sucker for seven minutes and then get right back in. Uh, my cojones are not it. that big. Kyle's going to have to try it when he gets here, right? Yeah. He's no, going to say, sorry, no. I can't work out with Craig. I got a cold plunge. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. I don't know. I might prefer the cold plunge to get beat up by Craig. I got to pick my funny. poison. But yeah, like the two meanest things I have right now is that catalyst suit that oh literally gosh. just puts a hole through you and like beat your body up like there's no tomorrow uh, and that cold plunge. I'll talk about toughening. Suffering. It's You've good. got quite quite the setup now. You're not going to have to leave that. No, no. Once no. You get a car, I'm trying to get Craig. Go anywhere. I'm trying to get Craig to come see his boy at my house at 6 a.m. versus me have to drive 30 minutes into town. You know. Um, but uh, anyhow, no, it's 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 perfect. I can. Uh, I got my little gym set up. Um, you know, hot tub, plunge, sauna. Got the podcast room here. We're building a little playground in the backyard. We're gonna start taking out some trees. Trampoline. Trampoline. Well, so we're gonna we're gonna like um, you know we're gonna build courts here soon. Uh, definitely sooner than later. But like to build a shop, a couple courts inside. I can move my podcast room out there, and then around nice. that, like barbecue pit, and then this big open turf area. Uh, we'll have soccer posts. We'll have like an in ground sandbox. Um, we'll have the trampoline in ground. Anyhow, just make it like a kid playground, right? We got the scooters, we got the turf, got the courts in the backyard. You never have to leave the compound. You don't. <laughs> P.S. If you're a uh, builder or a yard designer, <laughs> you know, hit us up. Right. <laughs> Anybody right. local, right. Or, or maybe even if you want to travel in, maybe train or do whatever. But uh, we definitely need some help and direction on that. We got to move. Yeah, quickly. you found you found your next sale right here. Yeah. this is a big project. Yeah. <laughs> Help Call us these out. guys up. <laughs> okay, K-Mac, uh, so, so top eight guys and girls in Premier that you think is going to go first. Uh, I'm going to read what? you. Go ahead. So yeah, I, so yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I was going to read you my, my, my guys list. Let's just go one by one. The first, the first guy I have is Ben, obviously. I would, I would assume you okay. have Ben as well. Yeah, yeah. I didn't put it in a particular order. I, I certainly can. But yeah, I had, I had Ben first. Um, I guess next, even even despite him not 
doing a ton with singles. I think he's still very capable. No, I, I would sure. go Riley number two. He's got that dog uh, in him. You also go <laughs> for sure. For well, sure. and he and singles. Pri- I, yeah. Pri- I mean, prime example. It doesn't matter if you're a good singles player or not. When you have that competitiveness and that and that right. grit and that passion like you can be a top 10 top 15 singles player just by pure effort and that's what Ryan does the guy literally just puts in so much freaking effort on that single score right yeah just a competitor through and through right. knows how to rise to the occasion so i would take riley number two yeah. um same here who would you go number three uh, who would so, you go three yeah i got ben rye j-dub okay same same yeah i'd go j-dub i think it's it's really open after that. I'd, I'd probably take you at four. What a nice um, guy. Over, Put him you know, on the I think spot. For me, it's, 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 it's you, or, you or Dylan. Right, I just feel right, like right. in that environment, you know, Dylan might have, you know, better counter punching, you know, as a doubles player. But right. I just feel like you bring the energy more for a team, better singles guy. Uh, so I'd probably take you four. And then uh, five for me would be, for me would be Dylan. Who, who do you have at five? Yeah, so I have I have D at four. Uh, I have Julian at five. Um, you know, and and talking about J Dub, like obviously, like the first two MLP events, J Dub didn't do a whole lot. This last one, he showed that he he uh, just from a right. camaraderie standpoint, from a team standpoint, uh, he was really able to figure it out. I think uh, just as a player, he's definitely maturing. He's getting older, starting to find it, find his identity again, or just f- find his identity in general, and. Um, yeah, just how many matches he was able to win with Kalamoto and Tardio. Um, I thought he looked very good. So him being in that three spot definitely makes sense. Dylan, total stud. Julian, obviously, the guy, you know, uh, not throwing shade his way because he's done plenty. But just with PPA results recently, you know, hasn't been as sharp. But you, you put right. that guy in, a, in an MLP format, you know, he's, he's pumping his chest. He's eyeing people down. He's bringing the energy. Go tell me who can match that energy. Tell me, I can't. I can't. Right. Well, no. I mean, I, I think I think Julian's kind of like a like a Rob Hewitt, right? Like they're they're a very good player, but they bring it up another level right. in that environment. Kind of thrive in the shot making, up tempo chaos. So yeah, I, I definitely put. Fueled I've got Julian as my seven. I had Deckel as six. Got it for me. I've Deckel then Julian seven. Uh, where, where are we at with you? So yeah, what I went, I uh, we? went Julian, uh, five, myself, six, Thomas Wilson, seven and Matt Wright, eight. I think, I think, okay. Tom, I think Thomas, uh, you know, he, he can play both sides and men's. He can control on the left and mixed. Uh, he's got the big serve, the big drive. Um, you know, even though there's not a lot of offense with the backhand side when he's on the left, he's, I mean, talk about a guy who's able to create with his feet, kind of like a Matt Wright. He can get around, he can go yep. inside out, but he can find different looks with his forehand. Not a lot of people can do that. Um, and yes, Matt Wright hasn't had the best result. I don't, I don't think him and Lucy have really done a whole lot in mix this year. Um, and we all know he's probably not a single stud, but just what he's able to present in dubs, um, how he's going to dog you on the court and, and MLP, how he's going to get in your face. Just, I think that element, even though he's not great in mix and he's not, he's not great in singles. I think that element of just like the trash talk and getting in your face and like bowling people. Uh, and I'm, I'm not throwing shade his way. I think uh, if that's his way to win, great. He's, 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 he's great at that. He's mastered that, right. that, that, that talent. That's equivalent to, to being great in mix and great in singles. I, I feel like. Yeah, no, he's he's a tough one to know. I mean, if you're def- if you're just talking men's doubles, he easily makes the list. Right. Even if you're just talking doubles, I think he does for me too. Right. I put Jay at eight. Right. Uh, I know he hasn't had the best year this year, but I just think he's one of those guys that can bring it in all three events. Right. You know, can play the left, can cover a lot of court and mix, and then you know can do his thing in singles too. So I've got. Uh, the flying Frenchman uh, as my as my number eight. Flying Frenchy, handsome devil. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. women, Al, Catherine, Anna B. That's yeah, my, top three, same same for me. Uh, I've got Leia at uh, at four. I've yep. got Leia at four. Um, I didn't really order the next one. Let me kind of do that real quick. Who do you have as your number five? Yeah, Callie, and then I'm going with okay. Megan, Etta, and Lucy. Um, Megan starting with Leia, I think Leia and um, um, God, she's what's what's the freaking gal's name? Uh, Elise Jones, for God's sakes! I think Leia and yeah. Elise, uh, what they've done uh, in PPA is 
pretty incredible. They've they've made some finals. They've taken a couple bronze. Um, and like like the the move or or the partnership move with Megan and Annalise or sorry Megan Annalise um, and just how it benefited like the both of them. Megan has made some finals. Uh, Elise has made some finals. And not only that, uh, aside from PPA, they've been playing well in MLP. Uh, I feel like Elise has been winning some matches. I feel like Megan, obviously, you know, she won it uh, in the second event, and they won it in the third event. Her and Etta didn't lose a whole lot of women's matches. Um, granted, she, you know, she played with Tyler and Mix, so I don't, I don't think. Uh, I mean, Tyler's Tyler's probably better in men's than he is mixed. And um, uh, yeah, anyhow, I so I yeah, so I think uh, just judging by that, that, judging by that whole mix, and just judging by how much better Megan and Etta has got, and that whole group from Salt Lake. I mean, talk about all those females from Salt Lake. They've all leveled up, and it's yeah. very, very true. Like, Callie used to be the best player to come out of Utah, and she was a level, or she was like a notch above all those women. And I'm not saying those women are better than her, but there's definitely a much more even playing field now, and it seems like they're all kind of benefiting from playing with each other. <clears throat> Yeah, no, absolutely. And I agree with you. I think a year ago, we would have put her head and shoulders above the rest. And it's kind of like dependence on partners and who's just on on a given day to me with that whole group. But I did I did have a few different names. So I also had Lucy and Callie, but I put uh, Andrea Coop uh, on my list. I just feel like she's such a gamer. She just rises to the occasion, just nerves of steel. Right. Even though she doesn't do it full time, she just always seems to step up. And I went old school. Call me crazy, but just I'm a believer in Simone. <laughs> I think that Simone uh -huh. played with the. I think Simone played with Elise. I think they did pretty well. But I think that if she played with somebody with just a touch more uh, offense, a little more firepower, I think at this stage in Simone's career, kind of like playing with Paris Todd a little bit. I just think somebody with a little more firepower, where she could be a little bit of the setup person at times, right. um, which she's so comfortable and mixed and. And Simone can still play some singles. So, right. uh, yeah, she's squeezed in there at number eight. It's so, so tough to to rank her because she's not doing a lot of the PPAs. No. I, she's domi dominating the APP. So right. It's really tough no, to know sure. where she would land if she was a PPA signed player. But and, uh, it's still good enough to be in the top eight for me right now. And I would assume that we'll, we'll probably get some flack because we didn't put Paris in there. But just like what you mentioned, she hasn't played a whole lot of PPAs. It's tough to really... Get a good gauge on what, where her level's at. Obviously, yeah. her and her and Rye, uh, as you were sitting courtside, kicked my ass uh, there in Atlanta. We 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 had one right. game one. We were up game two, and then we kind of got rolled in game two and game three. But um, you know, she obviously looked looked good, or she didn't look good early in that match, and then she really cleaned things up. She started making a high percentage yep. of dinks, and the hands got better. Um, but no, she's she's definitely. I mean, she's definitely in the top ten mix. That's that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, and, I, and I, I probably would have even put Paris in there. I just didn't think, because there was issues with last MLP, I didn't even think she was eligible, or, or I don't know if she's going to do that this year. But yeah. if she was, yeah, she might have might have made top eight very, very close for me. Mama, uh, Paris is playing MLP this, this um, season, correct? I was correct? just going to, they I'm, just, I'm, they I'm just published the uh, list. So I'll, uh, I'll take a look real quick. Okay. Uh, but I believe so, yes. Uh, my Selkirk Invicta Power Air Gold Signature. That is a mouthful. Get your butt <laughs> over to Selkirk.com. Purchase that honey. Good looking paddle. Uh, plays just like the other Power Air models. Uh, simply, it just has a different lipstick. Um, also, Skechers Viper Pro. Uh, the white and pinkies are on sale. Um, so get over to Skechers.com and purchase your pair of Skechers Viper Pro. I can't tell you how cool it is. Uh, playing tournaments and seeing those white and pinkies all over and also seeing that new signature paddle uh, being played with. Actually, watching APP uh, Newport this last week and I saw Susanna Barr playing with it and I saw, I'm going to yep. butcher his name, Dong, uh, Dong Duong, the uh, Asian guy that made the finals of singles. I could have totally butchered his, his first and last name, but uh, Selkirk guy, he's like, he's younger. He's 17 or 18. Uh, I've heard, I've heard a lot about him. He's actually been uh, messaging me on Instagram. He's actually looking to come up to Coeur d'Alene and train for a couple weeks, but anyhow, great guy yeah. using my signature. Uh, if you guys want uh, either the paddle or the shoe, simply just go to Skechers.com or Selkirk.com. And to confirm, Paris is on the list. In the mix. And okay. She, and then All if, right. If you go ahead and go on NMLP, you can actually see the full player list. And the players are in order by their doubles duper rating. So it's kind of got a little cheat sheet. What's your duper? Uh, but she's number six. 
as far as dupers. Number six, according to duper. For okay. doubles. But again, you're comparing two tours. I don't know how. Yeah, tricky for yeah, sure. Tricky. Tricky. Hey, tell us about that about that MLP website. What's on there? Um, just the lists or yeah, just looking at it. What do you What do you see? How do you yeah, navigate? Yeah, you know, like the this is the available draft for 2023. Season two is in. I'm pretty sure it's closed. Um, so this is the definitive thing. Um, you can actually see the full list of women, the full list of men. I think too, it was like highlighting like if there was a number that was off or not great because I. I don't know that they made anybody completely ineligible, but right. there are dupers as low as, um, oh, there's some players on here actually that don't have a duper. So right. the last like whatever it takes to play 20 MLP. players, it looks like for the, at least for the girls don't have a duper, but the lowest duper on here is a 2.652. Got it. So, uh, yeah, but you can see all that on there and never then all know. the newest, uh, hey, news articles. Never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I'm I'm curious <laughs> what the background is of those players at the bottom there. I wonder. Diehards and believers. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Oh gosh. Okay. Okay. Uh, Nashville, 64 campers, eight pros. I was roaming. Um, let's see. We had uh, Eden. We had Andre. We had an all-star lineup. Star Mark. Studded. Uh, K Mac always is a shining star. Devin. Who else came back? Uh, uh, Pierre. Pierre Termel. Yeah, Pierre. We had Alex. Andre. We, and we, had, we had Alex, Alex. Pop. Yeah. We had three Alex Romanians Pop. there. Yeah. Get you yourself did. some Romanian meat, okay? <laughs> I'm telling you, take a bite. Three studs. Uh, I love when you were demoing. You're like, it's a little like Romanian sandwich. I don't know what exactly you're talking listen about. Don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> Romanian sandwich. <laughs> no, first time. First, you know, I've talked with uh, Edna and Andre a couple times. There's guys are sharp they're studs but alex is first sharp time teaching with alex sharp i mean he was a little drill sergeant he was i was always right next to him yeah. but he was on it like, he's on it he was making everybody raise their game so up. true no, what a that... all-star lineup and some of the nicest people for 64 people to have that many positive personalities when we're battling the heat and everything one of the more enjoyable camps i've been a part of in, in a long time right right for sure uh, but it's so true. There, there is something about the Romanian way when they teach. They like oh, the yeah. delivery is like on point. It's quick. It's like assertive. to the point. It's very precise. Yeah, very, yeah. very assertive. Yeah. Uh, and they, I mean, Andre's a little, little quieter, but Eden, like, it's pretty, it's pretty loud. It's right on you. <laughs> and Alex too. No, it's like a drill sergeant. It, but it's, it's totally. Like, I feel like it came back as you know. Uh, yeah, campers, I mean, uh, hear that out so much better. When it's, like, right to you, it's speaking to you, it's clear, it's precise, uh, especially when you're in a two-day, 12-hour camp and yep. a ton of information is being thrown at you. Yeah, just when you hear it in a more direct way, that definitely registers with me. Um, and I no, for sure. Like, I, I look up to that. I, I think people want to feel like they've got a leader on their two courts that are making sure everything's, you know, going well. And I think when campers feel that, they feel taken care of. So I love that style in a, in a lead or an assistant. Right, right, for sure. No, I was just, I was going to say, yeah, I and mean, when you're playing in a competitive, like you guys would switch to the game format, I think it was nice any coach that could like step in in that game because like people are in it, right? right. And you have to kind of speak yep. up to like right. stop the game yeah, and yeah. get people to like pay attention to the instruction that goes along with the game. So, yeah, I actually noticed that. I think I pointed that out about Alex. I, I was really uh, impressed. I thought it was cool. Yeah, Good bring the Romanian yeah, uh, <laughs> All of our teaching pros are great. They are. They are all great. Um, Ty played in the camp. It was Ty's first time getting getting McGuffin. Next time he's getting K-Mac, though. Because I, <laughs> all right. even though he didn't win very many games and he stayed on course 16 the whole time, I cannot coach my son. I'm just a psycho. I'm a complete psycho. Every time, I didn't say one positive. I mean, it sounds so mean, but it's true. Like, and, and just looking at, like, my dad and I, it's the same thing. Like, when I grew up, he was all over me. <laughs> Never said anything right, positive. Right. was always in my face. And uh. it just was not healthy. And what I experienced at that camp was not healthy. I <laughs> After I spent, like, the first two hours kind of roaming over there, then I just left. I'm like, you know what? I, I can't even watch. You know, yeah. he likes to likes to serve and come in. You know, wants to wants to hit like a return and stay back Gotta and have a, have a cup of tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Servants stay, return and rush. And then, you know, only likes to hit the ball hard and only knows one no way. No drop shots. No. It's, right. it's no dinking. Br- bring- loves the forehand. Loves yeah. the forehand. Yeah. I wonder where he got that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he's always told you, like, when you lose. Ferrari he's forehand. Like, Dad, just hit the ball harder. Yeah, it's harder. He uses right? that in his game. So. Right. Just cram it down their throat with zero <laughs> discipline. Blind aggression at its finest, right? <laughs> So uh, to be fair though, Tyson, he uh, he did listen to me once. I think we were doing the speed up. Uh, I'm sure more than once. A, yeah, <laughs> had a big old, big old, big old backswing, right? And so I just told him, you know, you can swing out. You know, you can have a little bit of a follow through, but just don't take that puppy back. <laughs> you can swing out. <laughs> sure enough, he, he built he built up a couple of dinks and then fired and. You know, he, he's improved a lot, and you can tell how much fun he's having with it. And yeah. to be Obsessed. to be fair, I'm the exact same way with my son. Um, <laughs> I, I think that I, I think I think I can be direct with him because like him and I are pretty close, and you know, he, he loves being out there. But sometimes you got to take a step back and realize, like, okay, keep it fun. Like, don't be so direct all the time, right. even when they have the personality for it. Sometimes a little bit of patience with your kids goes a long way. No, so true. It's funny too. After like after both days, you know, our our average age at the camp was like sixty plus, and after both days, the camp was from like what ten to ten to five every day. At five o'clock, the campers are dropping like flies and just dying to get out there. And and anyhow, Ty's asking all the campers like before they leave if they want to play a game. He's like, "Hey, I'm not I'm not done yet. Yeah, you want to want to play game to 11? <laughs> That was like we were, <laughs> they're we all were, just run. Started. They're all just running away. They're like, no time, no more. Uh, no good story though. We were we were just up at Gaza and and Tyson was talking with one of the ladies up there and cut and uh, Ty Ty was uh, playing uh, singles with her and every time Tyson would stop and they would start conversating. He's like, Dad, Dad, we're not done with our match. Come on, like look. He won't let me finish. I'm like, buddy, dad's talking. He's like, no, but she's playing with me. That was, it was pretty funny. He's that just, was, he, oh, he only sees it. Another, one another, line. uh, <laughs> one liner of the camp legendary. So he's, uh, I think, I think you were on his court. Um, but Emily was on his court and she was playing in front of him and they're playing doubles and Ty's like cheating towards the middle and she keeps burning Ty down the line. <laughs> and she's like, Ty, you gotta, you gotta cover your line. And Ty's like, my, my partner's not there. <laughs> <laughs> it just shows it starts young, right? Oh my People God. instinctively know. Just you know what? Put that on my partner. My partner didn't come to play today. <laughs> my partner's not there. Ty, you got to cover your own side. Okay? If, you're, your if, you're on, if you're on the left and they drive Stop. it behind you, it's it's yours. Oh my um, God. Anyhow, no, he okay. he he loves it though. Like the last two weeks, he's been with us. He's been playing at the park in town. We can just drop him off for a couple hours and he can, he can uh, be personable and meet people and, and, you know, put his paddle in that little stacking line and they stack their paddles and he waits for his court and goes out there and uh, no, he's been loving it, man. Hey, uh, while you, while you're here, we got to get the boys uh, playing some matches. For sure. Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. Is, is Ty, is Ty going to be there? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. When, when we come? Yes. Ty, nice. Ty will be nice. here. So right. let's, so let's set up a Monday morning, best three out of five <laughs> and I just, like and just let those kids cry. <laughs> last time We're they played, <laughs> last time they played bad line calls crying, they're pissed. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember you and I got like no practice. In. <laughs> no. Tell that story. Tell that story. <laughs> Tell that story, please. Oh gosh! Yeah, yeah. So, K Mac and I are, yeah, are like trying to practice on one court. They're in the court next to us, and like you know, we had planned on like getting a bunch of half court drilling in and trying to play some half court skinny, and nothing got accomplished. No, no, we're just like hovering <laughs> over our sons, just yelling at them the whole time. Uh, <laughs> maybe Callie Pull and I need to supervise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Like it doesn't mean anything. I know. Um. Let's see here. We had we had a pro gathering at the house as well. A little pool party. A little pool party. Um, had all the pros come over, swam in the pool, threw the football around. <laughs> I felt Me- so bad. Tyson was talking about it at, at, to a camper, and he's like, yeah, yeah, we're having a pool party after this. And my eyes got so big, I'm like thinking, there's no way we can no, bring that many people to had, our house. Oh, no. <laughs> she had asked me what we're uh, doing after. No, I yeah, didn't yeah, just yeah. openly say it. God, no. No, no. <laughs> no, she had asked me what we're doing <laughs> after. I'm not going to lie to her. I'm like, yeah, well, we're having a little pool party. We're having, you know, some some of the pros over and stuff. And she's like, can we come? And I'm like, uh, and I, I like, <laughs> I stay out of all that. I just show up at the camp, crush it for two days, 
days. Do what I gotta do. <laughs> okay, you you need to remind me. I know. I hey, you need to remind me. I reminded you with my eyes real fast. Right. So she looked at me, and then I then I look at uh, what what was her name? We 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 had had yeah, her in a, in a camp in Kansas City. Anyhow, I looked at the gal, and I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm Actually, so sorry. I'm pretty sure it's just for the pros. And I said, that's what my wife said. <laughs> there just wasn't parking, and I I was just thinking, oh my gosh, I've like a couple hours to figure this out if that's the case yeah but and so we ordered all those tacos right like i ordered like 40 tacos thought there was going to be plenty left over my my wife ended up having to wash the kids out in the pool and she's pissed about that oh, I'm just, I'm just Anyhow, so, so, <laughs> so she comes in the house right comes in the house of course we have eight dudes in there three romanians each of them averaged about 10 tacos right <laughs> anyhow she comes in the house and come to find out there's no tacos left oh, and hey no, mama no. was mama was a little mad at daddy <laughs> she was no i was like hey if you want me on kid duty which is fine just like keep me fed and keep a drink in my hand you know right? what i like, said that's my only request i, I said in, hey no i'm food, sorry no but drink. my boys are here and i'm just trying to take care of my boys you know <laughs> but you need know, the help all right be, be a better husband <laughs> Okay, why first? Uh, uh, uh. So not not gonna lie, Meg, it was kind of entertaining to watch that because you did the classic. Tyson's trying to apologize. <laughs> Everyone could tell like uh, you're not happy. Like who would be? Uh, uh, you're like, yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, no, it's all right. It's fine. It's fine. He's like trying to scramble and make the situation better. I'm, like, I'm like so many times. I'm right? like, hey, you want me to order more tacos? No, you want so more Chick Fil A? You're like, I, no. I felt so bad too because like fine. It's fine. no, no, because because the classic answer I think was Chick Fil A, and we had just had Chick Fil A like four times in the last like. 24 hours. Hey, nothing wrong like, with those know, grilled nuggets. I love nuggets. you and nothing I love Chick fil A, but like, I'm good. Just, just, you know, make me a margarita and let's All move right. on. Just feed her with liquor. <laughs> let's move on. Feed her with liquor. <laughs> Give me oh, a refill. Please, please. Uh, okay, Mac, tell me about uh, ping pong in the pro house and you beating up on all the boys. Yeah, you know, so I, I play a bit with my with my son, and I think when my my pickleball confidence goes down, I try to build up my own ping pong ability in my head, beating up on a nine year old. But uh, no, we ended up staying. Uh, me and me and three of the other teaching pros, Pierre, Devin, and Mark, all all crashed together. There happened to be a ping pong table at the place, so each of the evenings we got after it. And uh, yeah, I was I was taking their lunch money pretty good on on day one. Stealing but, uh, it. Pierre and Mark. Pierre and Mark bounced back on day two. They almost uh, almost took some games off me. So it was, uh, it was a pretty pretty good time. Pierre's got kind of your style. He, he gets off the table, kind of cuts it, kind of resetting time really? and time again. So he <laughs> got some errors out of me. And then, and then Mark just yeah. came alive. Mark was Mark was weaker than Pierre and me on day one by a lot. And he just started swinging free uh, the second <laughs> game or second day caught fire so was, uh, i've talked a lot about this i think that ping pong's a decent uh cross trainer yeah, right. for for pickleball as far as like hand exchanges and you know being square with the table but uh you know it was fun to fun to battle it out with those guys it's too funny uh so after nashville uh taught a camp that monday tuesday tuesday took off at like six drove to uh louisville ended up getting to stay with this stud named papa johns um and yeah, we had a we had a great time at Papa's house. Um, he How the uh, kids? yeah, the kids tore it up. Uh, he had he had a golf course there. Um, let's see, a pool pool hot tub, sauna, gym, the whole setup, water slide, kids water slide. The that. place this place is massive. I don't know, I don't know how many. <laughs> did, did he hook you guys up with any pizza though? That's what I want to know. Hey, <laughs> better ingredients, better pizza. Better ingredients, Papa better John's pizza. baby, it's how we roll. <laughs> Tell uh, K-Mac what the boys have been saying or what what what, what Ty's been saying oh about. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it was so, so funny. funny. Last night. We ended up ordering a pizza last, last night. night. Well, Guess we what we ordered from. We haven't gone grocery shopping yet. And so last night we're door dashing. Still like, living the door dash dream. And hey, why not? the 4th nice. of July. So everywhere is closed except for pizza. No, I was and, 0 for, no, I was, oh, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. I was 0 for 3 yesterday on door dash orders. 0 <laughs> for 3. They just kept canceling our no, orders. No, I just kept canceling. Oh, it was so funny. So then we're about to order pizza and Tyson's like, oh, name me off the choices. And Ty's like. Uh, Papa John's, if not, I'm calling him and telling him that you didn't get Papa John's. 
<laughs> I said, no, you're not. They're like, huh? gonna rat you out. Gonna rat you out. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to tell him. I'm like, oh, no. And we're and, like, Ty, how are you going to do that? And the whole time at Papa John's house, he's just dying. So we stayed in his little uh, side yeah, yeah, yeah. carriage. or Carriage house, yeah. yeah, 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 place, yeah. This place little, was huge. It wasn't two, small by any means. Super nice. Place house, Anyhow, yeah. Ty the whole time just dying to go into Papa's main house, right? Because Papa <laughs> said he'd play pool with him and do all this stuff. And uh, yeah. So Ty, he could give two shits about me. He wants to hang out with Papa, right? And, right, uh, right, right. <laughs> so he funny. Just, just, he bugged me all day. <laughs> he wants to go into Papa's house, use his gym. And <laughs> I'm like, Ty, no, and, and Papa, like, sold us out. So that night, like, Ty's begging and begging. We're like, but it's late. You know, like, we got to go to bed, you know, uh, maybe tomorrow. And then the next day, he's like, yeah, Papa, you know, you said. And he's like, yeah, I, I text your dad a bunch, and I don't know what happened. You guys were totally welcome to come over. Like, oh, no, it didn't back us up at all. Uh, but, no, it was super fun. And Ty was very starstruck by Papa's got this, like, room with all this memorabilia and sports jerseys and all of this stuff. And Ty Sweet. just was just like, can I just stand in there and stare at the walls? I just want to look at everything. <laughs> this it guy's such just, a sports junkie. Uh, he like, loves basketball, uh, yep. watches NBA, knows all the stats, watches soccer, same thing. Yeah. Um, but, no, Papa John's was, uh, I mean, is, is nicest guy. He was super embracing. Um, and I had a nice little pickleball game. I ended up doing like a two day clinic there. The, uh, company that I'm with wild health that kind of handles all my labs and, um, did all my DNA testing. I ended up working with their whole team. I met one of the main doctors that I had been talking with, uh, just never had met him, uh, in, in person. Also met my therapist, Ben. Um, and it's cool too. Like that whole wild health team is, is full of just doctors and scientists and athletes, n- athletes yeah. and nutritionists. Anyhow, yeah. just like the nicest people. And they're all boys. Like, <laughs> like every day after, like they basically played both days. I, I did my clinic from eight to 12 and they'd play afterwards from 12 to four. They'd let Ty jump in and play games and stuff. And Ty was refereeing, yeah. oh, but was like, nice. but like every day that they would leave, they'd all hug tell each other that like they loved each other and like, it was just so cool. It was like this total oh, yeah. bond of all these health dudes. And like my main guy, Nate, uh, played, uh, played football at Oregon state, big beefy dude. Uh, anyhow, it's just cool to meet the whole team. Uh, Papa's good friends with the whole, uh, wild health team as well. Also, I think Papa was a patient with wild health. Yeah, That's yeah. kind of how he, uh, got oh, to, gotcha. uh, yeah, got to know him. And now Papa's just dialed, man. Like fit, um, so fit and Su- like super fit super takes all the supplements hacking, yeah. super into like take care of his body a lot of the same stuff on and him. very passionate mm. about it asking tyson making sure he's doing everything that he should be doing yep. um, matt the owner was like all of them were just so informative and they like know so much and are so passionate about what they do and like cutting edge science and all of this stuff it's it was super it was super cool and but they're all super down to earth yeah, too right, so right. Um, dude, do, do, did all of them play or were some <laughs> of them like just brand, brand new right. beginner so, to pick up Yeah, so they, so it's kind of tricky. So I had basically eight, eight people or eight dudes from Wild Health each day on one court. So it was, it was gotcha. basically like, sh- like show the fundamental and then the drills were like, King uh, court. Uh, well, the drills were very like abbreviated <laughs> to, to try to make it work right. or we would right. do like cooperative king of the court as like a drilling segment and then the game portion obviously was always like some sort of form of like rotational king of the court anyhow right. uh obviously as you know eight people on one court's a little tricky you have to keep them moving um oh yeah but yeah like a lot of those guys had only played a couple times and so they basically got like you know matt said they got like three months of pickleball in like eight hours you know <laughs> uh and they other they all they're all ex-athletes they all got so much better too i mean by like the last two hours of, of day two um yeah, all the guys were making drops, they're making dinks, like they're playing the right way. Uh, nice. No, it was, it was fun. And it was a lot of testosterone out there. The boys are loving it, talking <laughs> trash. Yeah, it's funny. I was going to say, I'm sure there's a oh, ton plenty. of Yeah, right. Bodies. Yeah. Just total competitive athletes, though. I think it's like the perfect setting for pickleball, right? right? Like right. It totally explain the whole story right there. Yeah. Um, yeah, because they're all fit guys. Yeah, nice. right. Um, Matt, the owner of Wild Health, we ended up staying at his house for a couple days as well in Lexington, drove there after Papa John's. Uh, he owns this castle in Lexington. We ended up taking the kids there. Uh, they have like a petting farm. Matt and, and Banks like <laughs> fell in love. Uh, Ty tore it up as well. Matt has a, has a bunch of kids that are our age, so our kids uh, hung out and played. And Bankers loved Henry. Bankers <laughs> loved herself some Henry. Uh, but probably the... <laughs> Probably the uh, best story that we got from Papa John's and Louisville is 
Um, Papa John's just happens to be dating a younger gal, right? And uh, Sky, you know, being special needs and, and uh, being a little curious. Uh, and he uh, has uh, zero filter. He has zero know? filter. <laughs> Obviously, everybody's calling Papa, Papa, right? Sky goes up, you know, luckily Papa wasn't there. Sky goes up to, uh, to, to Papa's girlfriend, Alexa, yeah. and asks her uh, where her dad is. Where's your dad at? <laughs> where, where is your dad? And I was standing right there, and my, I was just like, "What do I follow?" Up? I look right at him, and I'm like, "Buddy, that's his girlfriend, not his, not his daughter." And he's like, "Oh, <laughs> he didn't. Know. He was so lost." <laughs> like, so she I had to jump in there, man, because I was wondering what, how she would have responded. To that. <laughs> no, no, she was <laughs> so, an awkward position she to be. She was yeah. so cool about it. She's like, "That's not the first time I've heard it," and she was like right. making, she was making fun of it and joking with him, and I was like, "Oh." thank goodness like she was easy going about it <laughs> but yeah definitely uh, uh you know i think our we've all been there when our kids have said something they probably shouldn't right say. keep your mouth well, shut sure. <laughs> um came back what's your prediction on wimbledon who do you think is gonna win it uh on the men's side tough one um i mean i'm going i'm going joker i mean i think you have to right uh so I'll be honest. I haven't I haven't followed it as much as I would have liked to. Just being busy, um, right. didn't catch as much of the French as I would have liked to. And I believe they're what in the second round. Second now, round. so still pretty early. I know that Kyrgios was had to pull out. Um, who I think he was a finalist last year. I want to say, um, but yeah, I got to go, Joker. I mean, obviously, big favorite. Who do you think is the the most likely to take him? Off the mountain, maybe like a Sissy Pass or something. Yeah, I don't think Sissy Pass uh, is the guy he once was. Nor do I think that one hander like penetrates the way that it used to. Like you take a look at the highest level right now. It seems like like the two hander, you know, goes such a long ways. And whether it's pickle or it's or it's or it's tennis, like. Um, and I, I don't know. I just think uh, obviously it, it doesn't bounce up as high on the grass, right? So like one handers aren't dealing right. with balls up there. Um, I, I think uh, Carlos, I mean, Carlos, I mean, obviously, uh, right, right. Yeah. yeah I mean, go, Carlos. Right, obviously right. he, um, you know, uh, kind of had that downfall, uh, at the French against, against Djokovic and said that he went into full body cramps because of like anxiety and nerves and stuff like that. I've never heard of that, but it could very well happen. Um, it just, his, uh, trajectory, how well he's playing, uh, even though I don't know if grass is his, I don't think grass is definitely his, his main strength. That's what um, I was going to say. He may be good enough to win anywhere, but right. it doesn't seem like grass naturally does him any favors with his with his game but right um also too like the grass you know it seems like year by year it's getting a little slower it's not you know it's not grass court tennis like how it was in the, in the 90s and early 2000s when there was more certain volley and stuff like that um right right but um yeah i was watching i was watching sissy pass and team this morning and it's good to see team back on top bro talk about a guy i was telling make this Meg and I watched Team and Fed BMP in the finals of the Tennis Garden. Um, they're like two, 2020, and then he got hurt, hurt his wrist, was out for like a year yep. and a half, spent I don't know how many months not winning matches. And his, his ranking... No, like, he fell off. Fell off much big time. And could, he spent yeah. the last year literally losing first round. Like, he's had a hard time right. winning matches. So, uh, the last point I saw, he had won set four, was going into set five. Um, but yeah, I, w I would say probably Carlos or, uh, Joker or Joker. Yeah. Yep. But, it'd be a heck of a final. It'd be a heck of a final. It'd be a, it'd be a heck that, of a that final. True. I, I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, I've been, been talking to sock a little bit. Uh, socks playing with Isner. Um, obviously, uh, sock and Isner ended up, uh, making the semis of, uh, BMP, the very good team. I mean, two massive servers and that's the last team you want to see on grass. I'll tell you what. <laughs> No thanks. Good yeah. luck. I mean, maybe not a lot of not a lot of breaks uh, to be had. Right. No. No, for sure. Thumping oh. serves, big groundies, and two big boys to deal with. All right, Mama. Um, so uh, something just got released about MLP and how they have a new CEO and COO. Also, it seems like uh, there's this new celebrity uh, slash ex pro athlete league called PBX Pickleball. If you could just fill us in on, on those two. Yeah, things. no, um, I mean, a bunch of people covered it today. It looks like they did a big push out for the MLP news, but this one's just kind of off of um, 
CNBC. Uh, but some of the key points, Major League Pickleball has named uh, Julio DePietro as CEO and Bruce Popko as COO. Um, they will work to grow the professional sports league as a sport, uh, as a sport has gained enormous popularity at the amateur level. Their priorities include growing sponsorships, building the media rights business and licensing and merchandising strategy. So super cool. They both come from tremendous business backgrounds as well as sports backgrounds, a lot of NFL stuff. Um, so I think it makes sense. It's like the next step in the progression right. of making it a true league. Um, and it's right. so cool, like, they can take their knowledge from the NFL, right, and, like, transfer it over. Also, uh, the um, uh, Julio, hopefully I'm saying his name right, uh, has, like, a film background. So I think telling the stories about the players and really bringing people into fandom, like, really being right. able to get behind a player sure. or get behind his team, right? Yeah. Uh, and he was also a part owner in the Smash, which he's going to obviously divulge, like, get up his shares in the smash a little too so close he, for comfort yeah exactly but with that being said he's the one that pushed for florida smash so he's the one that came up with to make it territorial based oh, and then cool. everybody followed suit so already Smart. he's really kind of helped guide yeah. some things um and i really think you know that's what's next right media rights is a big thing they also yep. spoke in this article they didn't name the network but they are pretty sure because it's confusing right now. There's Tennis Channel, there's ESPN, yeah, there's you know tricky. all these different places to watch it. Right. They're talking to one network uh, to go ahead and do the whole 2024. I think season. it makes more sense to go one network or or to spread it across a couple. Like where do you get well, more viewership? I mean, no, no, no. So I think if it's on one network, people will know where to go watch it. Or, I yeah. think it's just it's it's tricky now because on any given event you're like oh is it on ESPN is it no, on TBS true. is right. it on ABC where is it so uh, I think it makes sense for one network just because I think they're going to be able to gauge the viewership a little better right now we're right. looking at combination I'm sure regardless of what network it goes to I'm assuming it will still be on YouTube uh, right. as well I think YouTube numbers it said went up 500 percent uh, from the original Jeez. and then Not I think it. that final the super final on Monday right uh, had like 957,000 viewers. So, so pretty cool. So I think sure. uh, it's all headed in the right direction uh, and uh, I so would, exciting. Right. I, w I would assume like the, like the diehard um, viewer is, whether it's on ESPN, Tennis Channel, uh, CBS, they're always going to find it, right? But, but, right. but right. It, at least for like the non-Pickleball mm -hmm. right. uh, Eye viewers, mm -hmm. T just to have it sprinkled yeah. on a couple of different uh, networks. It may make more sense, but no, I yeah. totally understand yeah. having. And, and I think what they're going for is that's exactly it. They know that the diehards are already going to watch. Right, they're already right. watching. They're gonna, so what they're, they're going to find it regardless. What they're looking at capitalizing yeah. on is the 39 million people yeah, that are yeah, watching right. it and play or that they're sorry that they're playing it. They want to get it in front of them right. saying, hey, look, there's actually a pro because They've seen the most, I think he said, the most success they've seen in sports is sports that people avidly play and can relate to, and Pickleball has all right. of that. So now's the time to go and then capture that aud audience. So uh, what I've read so far, it seems like knows what he's talking about, and I think it's... Uh, it's a good direction. So and PBX. Yeah. So PBX. I don't know a lot about <laughs> it. I'm actually gonna call Golden, and I'll have more to talk about on this on um, this next one because Golden was their most recent player that they signed. Uh, but GT, come come Showtime. Yep. PBX is a it's a pro tour. Also, it's kind of like a the, it'll be a pro tour with all ex pro athletes. So baseball players, golfers. Um, football players, all of these ex-athletes that are getting into pickleball, right? Uh, they'll Sorry. do kind of pro-am style with amateurs. So amateurs can play with these ex-pro athletes. Right. Um, they can also do like a, a corporate experience and, and work with other companies and kind of spread pickleball as well as like, a, I think, I don't know the tour format. That's what I want to kind of figure out, but they're definitely looking at signing way more athletes. They just got it rolling. Cool. Uh, so it seems cool. It seems like uh, it's a great way to get more eyes on the sport, right? right. So no, for sure. I mean, to yes. I think I think we've even talked. I think we've even talked about Definitely. like they should do something right. like this at some point, just because the pro ams are so successful. What I'd love to see them do, and I don't know enough about it yet, but if it is a team style of celebrities and, and former athletes, um, it'd be awesome to have them bring in like a, a current pickleball player like yourself. I know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mix in the pros to, to work. 
Well, there's not even necessarily play, but okay. as a coach, yeah, right, yeah, like coach right. them up for a couple of days, yeah. and then have that be your team, right? So that you can show them the ropes a little bit, or you know, talk strategy, Smart. mic you up on the sidelines. I think there'd be a way of intermixing or involving some of the current pros as well in some capacity to to elevate the league. But I think it's a great idea. Yeah, no, sure. I think it'd be so cool. Yeah. And I think it's just a great way, like you said, Kyle, <coughs> like even having a coach like that with a high level of explanation, you know, not just for those right. pros, but for the viewers and everybody that's going to see it because it's obviously going to be a popular thing being that it's, you know, and they've done a few little celebrity things on right. TV, but I think this, I mean, you've already got this player that you loved watching Golden all through his NFL career. Sure. You're Golden Seahawk, diehard. Yeah. Yeah. Easily they're going to watch him play pickle, yeah. right? So pretty cool. Or... Or they need to hire K Mac for the whole league <laughs> and pay him. <laughs> pay that man big money. He's going to coach uh, every Mac single ex athlete yeah, and pay him. I'll okay? coach them all. Coach them. Hey, come, come on. Commentate, I'll get you going. coach, I'll get you right. everything. He does it all. Leads, camps, commentates, and is the main coach for PBX. I love it. Love it. Get it. <laughs> and I'm going to say it again pay Find him. Me pay him. Yeah. Pay him. Yeah. Six, six figures, big money. Pay the man. Uh, Don't play. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, make sure he doesn't leave my camp business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Okay. <laughs> Pay him enough, <laughs> but <laughs> Just less <laughs> less time commitment, more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. gosh. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, K Mac, I'll be seeing you Sunday. Mama. Uh, Sounds good, brother. Mama, tell me tell us what, what shoes you got on there. These are my new sketchies. Sexy beast. These are my sketchers. Foamies. foamies. Get yourself uh, some foamies. They come in so many different come, colors. Come in all colors. And they're super comfortable. Yeah. Get them in the water, do whatever. Super lightweight. They fold up like when you're packing. Hey, so it's pretty hey. easy. Everybody loves them, but Zane Navratil. Keep he's, them in your pickleball. Zane told right. me they look hideous. Oh. Thank you, Z. Well, Zane's not a fan. We'll, yeah. get, we'll a get him fan. a pair. He might change his mind. Hey, right. money, money talks, baby. <laughs> Um, hey, my name is Tyson McGuffin. This is the McGuffin Show. We will see you guys next episode. Subscribe to my newsletter. It's pushed out every Thursday. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. We're doing pods. We're doing boilers. We're doing educational videos. K-Mac and I are meeting here very soon. For uh, viewers and listeners out there, if you're sick of all those old videos of me with short hair, no <laughs> tattoos, no mullet, don't worry. <laughs> New stuff is coming. Okay? We promise. Uh, Bring it in. New Bring stuff is in. coming. Yeah, it's going to be hard. <laughs> Anyhow, K Max gonna get to, <laughs> gonna get to Coeur d'Alene here soon. We're gonna film, and these videos are gonna blow up YouTube. I promise. <laughs> K Mac, love you. Mama, love you. We'll we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>